so hello we came back from outside from harvesting the grapes now we are going to put them together and those are our greens we are baking fat of bread with chicken for lunch and we are going to make salad and we went in the garden to harvest greens so we have a gypsy and onion and that's the greens we have here we have creeping trolley which is medicinal and edible can be cooked or eaten raw and and I know there is some uh, people that well uh, that know more about medicinal plant they like to say that when you look at a, a plant the shape can tell you what organs in our body it can heal and usually creeping charlie is known to work on our liver because of the shape of it so we are going to add it to our green our salad and i didn't harvest a lot of it i don't harvest a lot of it because creeping charlie grow grows close to the ground so they can be quite they can have bugs or you know be on the dirty side so we have garlic mustard a wild greens we harvest it from the garden as well and it is in the cabbage and mustard family so we have a lot of those then the lines we harvest those as well perennial sorrow broad leaf french sorrow so those are greens that I planted from seeds and I now just propagate them. So we have them as well. Garlic greens will be added to it. And we leave our garlic in the ground and just use the greens. So besides some uh, dandelions, most of them are garlic mustard. So because I have a lot of greens here, I think I will need this container for mixing the salad. So I'm going to wash it. Wash the thing and we can rinse them. And we use our own soap, handmade soap, olive oil, coconut and olive oil bath soap. We sell them at ninasoap.com. And we have our own dish cloth as well that we sell at ninasoap.com. And pretty much our bread is needs to be checked. I will wash the sink as well. I wash it earlier when I was done with the chicken, but I think. I will give it another wash before I use it for the grains. This cloth is made out of a bleached flour sack. 
so it's on the rough side. One time, winter savory. The winter savory, the whole thing can go in it, but the one time I will take it off of the stem. So I have few of them, but I'm not seeing them for now. I think they are mixed with the greens. And when you take the grains of the stem, if it's a little bit long, you can put it in the ground, a wet ground, and put dirt on it, and that will seed, you know, that will root. And that's the wild time. Use cold water. I think I just let them stay in the water and let's check on the bread. Bake the bread at 350 for an hour. We have the chicken baking down and we have our bread on top for one hour covered 350. And I'm just going to keep it back in there for another 30 minutes. The chicken can be baked at 250 for one hour, 30 minutes. So the bread, usually bake it for 30 minutes, cover it, and then uncover it 30 minutes, all at 350. And I like to just, I don't preheat the oven, I will put it in it and then I'll turn the oven on. But this time I cover it for an hour while I was baking the chicken. So, and now I'm going to set it for another 30 minutes. In case you have a business here, it's 350 that I'm baking. And I'm just going to do 30 minutes, but it will be good to check the bread halfway through, but we will see. So this is how I need to make sure I keep my um, container away from it. I will use it for mixing those. So the grain should be fairly clean because I mulched the garden even though it rained. The grain should be clean, but I will rinse them twice. And if you want, this water can go in the garden. I usually don't do that. I don't want my plants to get used to me watering them. So. Unless I propagate something that requires wiring, like if I cut a nerve, for example, and I peel the greens and I use the stem and I went and dig it in the ground and where I put it is dry, can reserve the water that I use to rinse this, put it on it, but it's not the case. And if I put something somewhere that will require a wet area and that area is dry, 
things that the plant is not going to grow because I do not water. So anything that will require me putting water there for that area to stay wet or moist, things that whatever I plant it there is not going to grow. Because the only time I will water will be the time that I use water to rest the green. So that's another um, wild time that we have a say. Because the stem is kind of brownish color, it's good, it can be propagated. It, it, it's, it will be tough to eat. I think that will be last year stem. This year stem will be more on the green side, will be my guess. But anyway, you just have to, you know when you start growing those things, you just spend time in the garden to observe them. Winter, savory, this year growth, the, the stem will be growing. Another winter savory garlic. Another winter savory. You can use it to spice chicken. And I like to make my own herb oil or herb butter and I'll put it in the freezer. So I will harvest the herbs. You can either chop them. We have mortar and peso here, marble. No, it's not marble, it's granite. So we can use it to chop the herbs. After you you chop them with knife, you can use that to grind the herb before you add it to the jar. But I don't do that often. I will just chop the herb, put it in the jar, and add oil to it, mix it together, or add butter that I soften at room temperature, mix it together, and put it in the freezer. Add the name of you know, the herb to the jar, tape it to the jar and then add it to the freezer and then I will add it to it until I fill the jar add more add more um, oil or butter depending on what is in it or I can just let me see if I will find some small or use those small jar that you can do, you can fill up in one. I think this is like a cup of jar, but then I can a syrup in it. But yeah. But if I'm using a quart, I might add, you know, more to it. Add it to it more than once if I wanted to fill it up. And that way you have your own herbs you can use in winter time to season your cooking. So this is done here. I'm not going to rinse what is here in it. So I'm going to empty this water. I don't know if you can see it, but the water is not dirty. But I'm going to rinse it again. I have some wild thyme. Wild thyme is a little bit different from regular thyme. But I have, I have played the book and I have found the wild time to be, it comes back every year. After two years, my regular time didn't come back. Again, having bunny around may not help, I don't know. But I have found the wild time to be more hard in two hours. Another 
um, time here. I have sage as well, but I'm not sure it's not coming back on. And winter savory sage, wild time, are uh, hardy to zone 5A that we live in. Put your clothes on. Okay, then you can stay in your room. Okay, so I think I'm going to take this water out of here. You can see the water, the water is clear. You put your clothes on. I'm taking those small pieces and putting it on the side here and here they will go. They can go in the garden. I don't think I will. Yeah, I think I'll have more things that are, it might be worth going outside and put them in the garden. So that's not how I'm compost, like in place. Just put it straight in the garden. So we have this green cleaned. This is not. So let's see what we want to do here. Oh, my nail to my both head. I'm seeing some ants crawling on this pile. Yeah, even with those ants again, this ring. So, Egyptian onion is kind of hollow inside the leaves compared to garlic. Garlic is kind of flat leaves. But again, if you are going garlic and then you have some flour in the garden, please be careful that you harvest the right thing. So we have this, and I don't like to rinse it like this or put it in the water because 
sometimes when I have a say, it will have liquid that will come out of it. So I don't want to add more liquid to it. I just want to preserve what is inside. So I'll pretty much rinse it, taking down a little bit. And then I'll rinse the end. So that's why I didn't add it to the water that I used earlier. And I'm just going to add it to my green for now. Those are the garlics. And one thing I like to point out is if I have brown end, I can take it out. And this one, I will, I don't like these leaves here, pretty much do that. And this one, the, 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 the stem will be a little bit tough, so that's why. This one I will just chop it up. It'll be fine. But the wild thyme, I think this time is a little bit on the hard side that I don't want to keep it in it. Okay. So we will chop this.
So, let's make the dressing. Let me add some garlic leaves to it. We are going to make kefir dressing and this is the fermented milk. This is the kefir culture inside milk. So I like to keep it in the fridge and this is kind of fermented the milk already. So I could pretty much swing this and add another milk to it. But I'm going to put it back in the fridge because I have fermented milk that are swing from the culture and add milk to the culture before I put in the fridge. So I'm going to use the one that I, I have. And I have two jar there. One, you can see that they all have different texture. So I will say this might be older than this. But yeah, I'm going to use this one. And you can just use the the hay way A W H E Y, I believe it's called the way, or you can mix it together or whichever works for you. In my case though, I'm just going to stir it. And you can measure, but I have a lot of the green here to work with. So, um, let me see. This is two cups. Two cups. I have one and so this is two cups and I put about half cups in the I, I'll leave it here now in the bowl and technically for dressing you'll add about the same amount of oil but I'm not going to measure a little oil will be perfect but I'm going to use peanut oil. I'm out of olive oil, I think. So I'm just going to eyeball it. And I need 
need to wipe, wipe this. You can get, you know, a little oil that you can use for raw eating, but I'm out of uh, mine. The, the one that will come in plastic will be less expensive than the one that will come in glass. You can buy the one in plastic and fill your own glasses if you want as well, because I feel like they all come from the same source as long as it's you know, if you can find organic, extra virgin, or extra virgin, first cold press. So now I'm going to add salt. And salt, I'm just going to and you can add sugar too because the kefir is quite sour but I'm not going to add sugar I will use more salt later on the green themselves and pretty much the dressing is done So now that we are done with the dressing, we are going to put it on the side. And let's check our bread. Sorry. Do you see the color of the bread? At this point, I can say the bread is done. Well, because I like crunch, I can lift it in it. I have five, five more minutes for the oven to start beeping. So, we have five more minutes. So, I can just leave it there. And let's work on our salad. Let me wash my hands. So what I'm going to do is, let's see, that's what I'm going to, I'm going to transfer the grains to this one, and I do have some water here. dressing as well. Like, yeah, that'll be fine. But because of the amount of onion, prefer to just add it to the grains.
So I just gathered some onion and added to it. I grind some apple yesterday and I'm going to use them but I think I'm going to rinse them again so I'm going to rinse them I washed them yesterday we soaked them I washed them yesterday with soap and water and rinse them and put them in there. In the jar, in the bowl, so that I don't have to do that today. So I'm just going to move them out of this one. And the beauty of using those grains, they don't wilter like if you're using lettuce, for instance. So when you have leftover, you put it in the fridge, it's going to stay crunchy. <coughs> At least for the next day eating. going to add my onion. <laughs> You'll notice that my onion, they are not that finely chopped. If you want to chop them finely, that's fine. So at this point, I like to add some salt to the greens because I don't think the salt in the dressing is going to be enough. And I'm just going to eyeball it. And I think that should be enough. You can add sugar to if you want, but I'm not going to. The heat from the oven is touching that one, so I'm going to move it to the side. And pretty much what will happen is I will be cutting those apples, and I don't think I need the. I can 
wash it and put it away. Because since I wash my hand, I'm going to get something I forgot was the butter. Forgot to get the butter out. Should have been out when I put the bread in the oven. That way it will soften up by the time we are ready. So I'm going to get the bread out. Let's do that. Just got another knife. And those bread are going to be quite hard. You can let them cool at dawn. They taste great when you eat them hot. But by the time um, by the time I'm serving, it will cool to the touch. In case you want to see the back, that's the back. And I just use flour, not even corn meal. For the bar, for the plant, I use a little bit of flour and get it. <laughs> it's not dense at all. making your own bread. You don't need yeast. Just sourdough starter and flour. And I use unbleached flour. You can use regular or proposed flour. That will work too if that's what you have. But I like to use unbleached flour. So they have them in stock at the store and we stock up on them. Something I like to do as soon as I'm done serving uh, the kids, the leftover, I will cut it in pieces. And I will put it back in the pan, those two pans, and put them in the oven 300 for an hour. And I'll turn it into sourdough crouton. So let me show that to you. When they are out of the oven, they will cool down and I will bag them and put, it, and put them in the freezer. And they are great for salad. You can use them in salad in winter time. When you leave the sourdough bread like this, left over, it will be hard. It will be hard to 
use them the next day. So you can just turn them into cotton. You can freeze them. And I have a lot of some browner than the others, but you get the idea. And I just use a uh, steak bread bag to store them and put them in the freezer. And you know, for leftover salad, I could have those cooked for the kids to eat with leftover salad the next day, or you can have them for winter use as well. And that is another one that I didn't put in the bag that I made. Might be one of the recent ones. Okay, so, and pretty much the way I do it, I just wash my hand and I like the crust of the bread I don't like the inside so the one that I'm going to eat myself what I will do is I'll just take pretty much you are making the back size of the crouton when you are making the chunk so I'm just going to put it there and I'll just cut them like that because I have sugar in the dough when I mix the dough together for the bread I'm not going to add sugar. I'm not going to add oil, anything, nothing. Just cut them in pieces. And for the leftover, I will use the crust as well. But for the one that I'm going to eat myself or not, I like, I like the crust. I don't like too much meat inside of my bread. So I'll take those out. It's kind of hard for me to do it now, but you get the idea. So that I can make the crouton to be those bad sides that it can go in your mouth full so and they'll go in the oven 300 one hour and they will turn brown i'll turn the oven off let them cool and then i'll put them in the bag and i like my bread to be like this to be empty so but then after i serve the kid i know i'll have remaining after my husband served it himself as well then I can quickly do the rest because when you leave sourdough bread like that for the next day it's going to be very hard so